It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul is at the uh, Professional Developers Conference in Redmond. Microsoft's uh, opportunity to talk to developers about Windows Phone 7, IE9, and more. We'll have the details coming up next with Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott, episode 180, recorded October 28th, 2010. To the cloud. Windows Weekly is brought to you by GoToAssist Express. If you're in tech support, solve problems fast with a leader in remote support software. Go to Assist Express for a free 30-day trial. Visit gotoassist.com slash windows. And by Ford and the new 2011 Ford Fiesta. With an EPA estimated 40 highway miles per gallon, no other compact car is more fuel efficient. Drive one this week at a dealer near you. And see how the Ford stacks up to the Lamborghini when it comes to agility. Watch the Fiesta versus Lamborghini video on YouTube. And by Carbonite. Backing up the files on your PC or Mac is safe and easy with Carbonite. For a free trial, plus two free months with your purchase, go to Carbonite.com slash Windows. It's time for Windows Weekly. Yes, it's time to look once again deep into the crystal ball and prognosticate what is going on in Redmond, Washington. Here from Redmond, Washington, our very own Paul Therott, the editor-in-chief of the Supersite for Windows, winsupersite.com. He's an analyst for Penton Media. He's I a look like I'm, I'm using a, a camera from the past. You do. What you look like thing? you're coming to us from the 50s. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing in Redmond? I asked myself that same question Why, this morning. Paul? Why? Why? <laughs> What are you doing this, there? This week is Microsoft's PDC-10, the Professional Developers Conference. Ah. Um, usually, Microsoft has a PDC in the beginning of a big platform wave. You know, when they launched Windows NT, when they launched Microsoft.net or Longhorn, you know. Uh, this year, it's kind of just a throwaway extra one. <laughs> you know, they don't really have an a, extra PDC. A, they don't have a big new thing happening, but I think they want to make sure developers are on board with their various initiatives, right? IE9 and Windows 7, Windows Phone. PDC you know. sometimes is not, there's no regular schedule. Some, sometimes no. it's, it's uh, sometimes every it's two years. years. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's not every year that Microsoft comes out with a major new platform, you know, so they don't really have to do it all the time. You know, uh, Windows Vista was delayed so many times, I think they had at least three PDCs <laughs> during, during that uh, little debacle. But, right. you know, they've kind of settled into a normal schedule, and then they threw this little curveball. So from the perspective of on-site attendees, this is the smallest PDC by far, although that's by design because... They, they're having it at the campus where they can only have a certain number of people anyway. How many? And uh, I, Actually, I don't know. I'm sorry. But, but of order of magnitude, that, hundreds, thousands, millions? Oh, several thousand. Uh, several well, thousand? Uh, couple, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. That's not true. Uh, a couple thousand, I would think. On, but oh, there wow. are tens and tens of thousands of people following along live. And so actually, from that perspective, it's the biggest PDC ever. That's the way they're so uh, describing it. If I wanted to watch, could I watch a live stream, or do I have to be a yeah. assigned no, as a can. developer? You can, no, you can just, anyone can see it. Oh, that's neat. Where is that? I believe it's at MicrosoftPDC.com. Somebody said that uh, Mark Rasinovich is about to speak in about half an hour. Yeah, he did a little bit of the keynote. Uh, He's yeah. a guy who did the Sys internals. Microsoft mm -hmm. uh, bought and hired him. Yep. And uh, really, really cool guy. I'm glad yeah, that they. A, I'm glad that they kind of uh, show him off. Yeah, if they could convince him to do a little more of the running the company stuff, that might not be. Ah, <laughs> well, there's an opening I hear. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And actually, that's an interesting point because he is a possibility. You're kidding? As C as no, in as, my mind, I mean, uh, oh. if someone chief, who could do as that chief job. software architect, really? Absolutely. Yeah. He'd be the guy, he's wouldn't he? Genius. He's a genius. How interesting. I mean, he's focused on. Isn't he focused on? Uh, kind of system level utilities and stuff like that or maybe he's gone beyond that now yeah well he, he's very low level yeah yeah because that's what sys internals did mm -hmm. yeah no he's a smart guy though well that's cool yeah so uh this is for developers is there anything mm -hmm. that we can glean for users from this yeah not much <laughs> you okay. know um 
uh, obviously, any time Microsoft tonight at uh, I don't even know what time, uh, 5 p.m. Uh, PD, PT possibly is going to announce their quarterly earnings, which are going to be awesome. That call's coming but, up, right? Yeah. Yeah, but that's not, they didn't really, you know, of course, they can't say anything about that. Uh, but the consensus is it's going to be crazy good, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But, you know, as far as news, I mean, a lot, you know, <laughs> they use the word momentum. I should have had a momentum drinking game going, and then I wouldn't have been able to appear on the show. Because <laughs> really? You'd be so drunk. The, it was they a said lot it a lot. We talked about this last week. In fact, I think you were ready for, to be upset about this. <laughs> yeah. So Windows 7 momentum, was all the stuff we talked about last week, nothing new needs to be uh, said there. Although I did, you know, and this was something I was wondering about. Uh, they had announced about a week ago that they had sold 240 million new Windows 7 licenses over the past 12 months, which works out to, you know, 20 million a month or whatever. But to me, that's, and you know, that's a big number, but we know that over 300 and whatever million PCs are sold in a year. So what are the other 100 million computers running, you know? Right. And, and one of the figures they came out with during the keynote was that there were over 350 million new PCs purchased in the last year. Wow. And then again, you know, 240 million new Windows 7 licenses. So somehow in the past 12 months, 110 million PCs went out the door with something else. Pirated versions of Windows, probably. Well, that's... Uh, that's I have to think it's at least half of that. Well, I, I'm... It's, I mean, it's not Linux. Was probably, XP know it. was a big part of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, how many computers did Apple sell? 12, 10, 12 million, something like that? Um, so we're seeing. I'm seeing on the Seattle Post Intelligencer blog, mm -hmm. Microsoft profit jumps 51 percent record Q1 revenue. Well, did, wait. So they released it. Uh, well, you know, sometimes they do this before the earnings call. They'll do. Uh, they'll do a press release. So this is yeah. This is uh, the latest. Oh, I was. I didn't even look because I N thought it wasn't no. happening. No, you're right. Net income skyrocketed from 3.57 billion first quarter 2010. Oh, yeah. To 5.41 billion. This is net income profit. 5.41 yep. billion in the quarter ended September 30th. Yeah, this is a this is a real train wreck of a company, isn't it, Leo? Holy you know, cow! Uh, it's, it's been the the thing that's weird about this, and this the, my, the prediction that's I made. That's Exxon about, money, man. <laughs> that's good oh, bucks. Oh, they make they make big money. I mean, yeah. um, we'll get to this in a little bit. I mean, there's been a lot of down talk on Microsoft lately, um, but what people forget is that this company prints money. You know, it's cute to, you know, I got a, I got an email from some jerk with a Mac.com email address who said something like, you know, nice job clinging to a sinking ship yeah, uh, well, kind of email. Yeah. You know, the, the sinking ship that just made $16.2 billion in one quarter. You know, that sinking ship? Yeah, they're doing terrible, you know. So even though uh, Windows 7 is a year, celebrated its year anniversary, mm -hmm. uh, it's still selling very well, obviously. Office 2010 is the new edition. Yep, yep. Earnings, Wall Street thought they'd make 55 cents a share. It was, it were 62. 62. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Quarterly revenue up 25% of the year to date. Not bad. Wow. Not bad. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty impressive. I mean, um, <laughs> Apple's quarterly revenue, 20 billion. Yep, yep. Uh, but but no, what makes us profit? Is higher. Higher. Because it's all software. Yeah, so well, just, mostly yeah. sober. Yeah. So, uh, but it's but well, it's what uh, I mean. You can make a larger picture out of this, which is mm -hmm. that the computer industry is doing okay. Yeah, and one yeah. So the prediction I had made in the press room earlier today at PDC was that Microsoft would release blockbuster record earning results of some kind, and that the story is still going to be some picky and little. Well, you know, Office only grew fifteen percent, and we were thinking it was going to grow sixteen percent, and that's a trouble sign. You know, that kind of thing, where you really have to kind of pick at it to see little problems, you know. Why is it? Uh, I mean, look, I mean, yeah, you could so. say, oh, it's the trend that's uh, not in Microsoft's favor. But why is it that, that the stock price is flat, that people just don't get excited about Microsoft anymore? Is it is it just psychological? It's their, it's their, yeah, it's their products, you know. Um, you have to compare them to Apple because Apple is the obvious um, sort of competitor, you know, the the other side of the coin. You know, Apple deals in exciting consumer oriented products that are very touchy and uh, have you know news appeal you know uh, microsoft may is microsoft spent 90 minutes today talking about back end services that run in the cloud and <laughs> how you can move vms up there and middleware I mean, we love middleware 
it's just it's boring yeah. you know and and don't get me wrong so, some of the stuff microsoft does is exciting obviously you know the xbox is is exciting and interesting especially with this connect thing that's coming out um you know windows phone is exciting windows 7 is interesting at least i don't know exciting is maybe not the right word but uh, windows 7 is certainly something that has a big impact on the consumer market um and all these pc form factors and you know th there's stuff but microsoft what I just described is only part of Microsoft, right? Um, there's a big chunk of Microsoft that is things like office productivity or online services or servers. Uh, not just Windows Server, but, you know, server products like Exchange and SharePoint. And that stuff is, uh, generates money because, you know, they have customers. But it's not, it's not interesting, you know, I think, from a news perspective. And uh, that's the situation, you know, for Microsoft. It's tough. Their stock has not moved uh, in roughly eight years, I think it's been it really, yeah. right around twenty-five. Um, you know, it's 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 you know, depending on how you look at it, it may seem a little unfair or whatever. But I think it's an indication of how mature that they are. You know, Steve Jobs' biggest accomplishment, maybe, is that he makes Apple seem new and fresh and young, when in fact they're older than Microsoft. You know, or as old as Microsoft. Isn't that, um, isn't that interesting? You're absolutely right. Yeah, and even even when he was failing at Next. He still had this ability to yeah, make aura. Next seem like a yeah. startup. Yeah. You know, that they had been, they might have been failing for five, six years in a row, but to people observing the company, it still seemed like it was new and they could still maybe pull it off, you know, right. even though they had never done anything successful for that entire time period. Um, it's an interesting, you know, thing to be able to do. And I, and I don't know that anyone could ever copy it. It's a study but, in consumer and media psychology that I just find fascinating. Yeah, but uh, well, from books my, will be written. Books will absolutely. Be written. But it must this be very frustrating from Microsoft's yeah. point we, of view. We, uh, because we didn't experience this stuff, we could look back on uh, stories about Standard Oil or whatever uh, the big you know the big railroad companies right. of the late eighteen hundreds. Um, or Pre whatever previous it is. You know, big booms. We don't understand that stuff, so we have to read books about it. You know, right. so someday this software situation, this um, right. sort of competition that occurs in the in the tech industry between companies like Microsoft and Apple and others, will be something that you know people will study and know uh, the world will have moved on. Maybe or maybe we'll still be running Apple i something. You know, well, and it's of interest to, to you and me because. Mm -hmm. Um, we're in the middle of it, which I think is, you yeah. know, I mean, we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's, that's one of the reasons we cover the beat we cover because it's an interesting beat. Right, right. There's always something new to learn and uh, always something new happening. And I think a lot of people, you know, look, in the same way that we counted Apple, a lot of people counted Apple, including a lot of their oh, yeah. closest fans. Who I counted them out. I, 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 Everyone did. I, when Gil Emilio was running Apple and, and, and Herr yeah. Spindler, I was, it was an Apple death watch. I, I, I yeah. probably have recordings Michael somewhere. Spindler was the guy who hid under his desk shaking, hoping no one would notice yeah. he was even in the room. You know? Somewhere I probably have recordings uh, of me on the radio saying Apple cannot survive yeah. this you're, next you're, year. Right, and you're not a jerk for having believed that. It, that's common sense. You know, it, it, that they were able to overcome that is the miracle. I mean, yeah. that's why it's a miracle. That's why it's interesting. Yeah, Steve um, Jobs is it's, a Deus it's, Ex Machina. Yeah, and it's odd to me that we live in a time right now where you know Microsoft is generating all this cash, and they're still seen as, oh man, these guys are in a lot of trouble. You know, that's you know, the thing that really, amazes me. That what they're in trouble of is losing influence, and right. the trend you know, is the uh, trend against I, them. It doesn't even even when you look at these results, it doesn't even look like the trend is against them. No, no, and and you know again, it's it's easy to write. And there were a lot of stories like this this week. I mean, we might as well just jump ahead to the Rayazi thing. You know, Rayazi didn't do Microsoft any favors. Um, he that, wrote, what the uh, hell was that blog post? I read it four times. I still don't understand it. This is a guy who, who took a lot of space to say something very simple, which was simply that you know when he came to the company five years ago, he looked ahead to the future and said, you know, cloud computing is going to be a big deal. Maybe we should do that. Um, Microsoft embraced this to a very large degree. And, you know, he looks back and says, well, we did pretty good. We missed some things. We got some things right. But, you know, we still need to look ahead and, and there's a change coming. And he talked about this post-PC era, which is not exactly a new idea. Um, but, you know, <laughs> unless you know something I don't know, I mean, uh, PC sales continue to grow every year. Uh, they're expected to be uh, 400 and some whatever million it is next year. And... Um, continue to go up, so we can you know we can talk about the post PC era, but it's it's a tough thing because Microsoft's core businesses are all still kind of rocking and rolling right now. You know, Windows is doing great, Office is doing great, Server is doing great. Um, the dog is apparently going to bark at somebody. Listen to this this one <laughs> paragraph that I just uh, I, I I read it 
over and over. Certain of our competitors' products and their rapid advancement and refinement of new usage scenarios have been quite noteworthy. Our early and clear vision, notwithstanding their execution, has surpassed our own in mobile experiences, in the seamless fusion of hardware and software and services, and in social networking and myriad new forms of Internet-centric social interaction. And what does that mean? I, well, it sounds like <laughs> Apple and Twitter uh, beat us, but... Uh, you know, I, I, I'm fascinated how he never names names. Yeah, one thing. certain of right. our competitors and their certain rapid advancement. Uh, you know, I, I think you know one of the uh, classic mistakes Apple, uh, Microsoft made for many years was not, never to say Apple. You know, when Apple was on the up and coming there, and they would never say Apple. You know, they would say something along the lines of what Ozzy said there. You know, right. one of our competitors is you know doing this, and I don't uh, understand that because everybody is supplying Apple into that phrase. So right. it's not like people are stupid. Yeah, and it looks bad when you... I have to say, the obfuscation and the unclarity or the difficulty of expression that I see in this uh, blog <laughs> post kind of explains a lot. Well, uh, and this was the question I asked uh, of this Rayazi. You know, he he's one of the few people that maybe could have succeeded Bill Gates, but then he kind of disappeared. Not if this is how he thinks. Yeah. And, and when he comes out, you know, you're leaving the company, right? So... Shut There's up. A, I did a great <laughs> Shut job. Shut up. Yeah, <laughs> That's what I did you a great job, do. and now you guys are screwed, but I'm leaving. Take so. your stock options and shut up. I think a lot of people were very, at Microsoft were very upset. But they've but, got to have been. But what, what occurred out of this is a number of people, sometimes in very high-profile ways, wrote very long articles about, uh, along the trend of Microsoft is dead. You know, Microsoft is a dinosaur. Microsoft's on the way out. Microsoft's in trouble. And the theory there being... Because Ray Ozzie said it was so. Although, right. no, you know, they don't really mention the memo. They, they, these articles or editorials were almost written as, a, as if they were unique ideas that these guys had come up with all on their own. Um, one of the people who wrote an article like this actually cited this PDC as an example of why Microsoft was in trouble. What? Because it's a small PDC. And in the past, Microsoft could bring thousands and thousands of developers to Los Angeles and have them all show up, and now they can't even get a crowd of just a couple thousand. Oh. And uh, this is, like, I, as I said, this is not the launch of a major new platform that everyone's ignoring. This is, we're having an extra PDC because we want to make sure developers are on the leading edge. It's not, you know, there's nothing important coming. And there may be hundreds of thousands watching online. Yeah. I it's mean, just, it's, this is the dawn of, a, of the online conference anyway. I mean, I don't think you could... It's boring, and it, it's just as boring as the server stuff. Unless you're, you're, unless you're a programmer and you're writing code, then this yeah. stuff is fascinating. Right, but that's like saying the Mac is a great platform for graphic, you know, right. <laughs> graphic artists. It doesn't, doesn't make I mean, headlines, no. I'm sure understand. it's great for those people, but... Yeah, it doesn't um, make headlines. They're not... Middle, yeah, they're middleware not. is boring. Enterprise is boring. The press doesn't and want to write about funny, it. It's funny, you know, you sit in this audience, too, and, of course, it's developers, Microsoft-oriented developers. So the things these guys applaud at are, are classic, you know. <laughs> um, you can take a VM and, and upload it to the cloud and just run your apps in there. <laughs> you know, and the rest of you are like, what? Huh? You know, <laughs> what just happened there? I mean, it's... it's um, I like it's, it. It's I like geeks. Thing. I like this hardcore stuff myself. I just think yeah. that's great. Yeah, PDC uh, keynotes always follow the same trajectory, um, where it's a, a downward spiral as far as the interest level. You know, because yeah. as it gets more and more toward toward the heart of, frankly, what the show is about, right. it becomes less interesting from a, a general right. uh, perspective. But anyway, I mean, I, I don't know that there was much in the way of news. You know, Microsoft released a, an IE9, another IE9 platform preview, not a beta release or an RC, but a platform preview, which is the the IE version that's aimed at developers. And they actually added some new developer features um, kind of at the last minute, which I think was a smart thing to do, uh, just to make sure that when the thing comes out, it has, you know, the features that developers want, you know, for their sites. But they talked about Windows Phone 7 without really saying anything super new about it. They, there was a demo of the Amazon Kindle app, which I can't wait to get. Um, and that looks awesome and uh, very unique looking on Windows Phone. It looks great. Really? But not, not the same as the other platforms? Well, you know, the reading experience is very similar, but the difference on Windows Phone is that it can take advantage of that, you know, panorama right. UI style, and it's just it's beautiful. It's oh, just a neat. really nice, uh, oh, yeah, neat. gorgeous application. Um, but, again, not, not news. And then the stuff that was news is the type of stuff that, frankly, no one here is going to be interested in anyway. 
Um, you know, for example, they shipped an, a new O data library <laughs> for, uh, for developers um, on Windows, well, on Windows Phone. So neat. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, okay. Hey, let's yeah. take a break. We're uh, Paul Thorat is in uh, is in Seattle. He's there for PDC, Microsoft's Professional Developers Conference, the tenth PDC, and uh, we've got lots more to talk about, including uh, the Slate PC. Mm -hmm. uh, some more Windows Phone information, Service Pack 1 for Windows 7. Uh, all sorts of stuff to come. Don't go anywhere. But before we go on, I would like to mention our friends at Citrix who do a great product for anybody who has to support people, whether it's IT or a software support. Go to Assist Express. It takes their remote access backbone and just makes it so great for remote support. You don't have to, you know, sit on a call explaining how to do something to somebody. You don't have to travel. You don't even have to walk down the hall. You just fire up, go to Assist Express. You can do eight sessions at the same time, so you're never, you know, waiting while an install or a scan is going on. You just move to the next session. Unattended sessions are available. No pre-installed software needed either. You have the software on your machine. You send them a link, and 30 seconds later, you're in the system. They don't need to have the software installed ahead of time. Instant support online. Frost & Sullivan, which is a uh, analyst group that uh, focuses on this category, called Go to Assist Express, the worldwide market leader in remote support. Because it's easy to use. It's affordable. It's secure. They've got day passes for the occasional support person like, um, like me. But you're going to want the month to month, I think. I want you to try it free for 30 days. Go to assist.com. That's the website. Go to assist.com slash Windows, and you can try it free for 30 days. Windows, Citrix, Go to Assist Express. There's a good combination. By the way, it also works on Mac. In fact, I've supported my mom from a Windows machine and vice versa. Go to assist.com slash Windows. We thank them for their support of Windows Weekly. Leo Laporte, Paul Therott. Is Ozzy at this event, or is he really gone? No, 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 no. No, I don't think they're going to be carting Ozzy out anytime soon. Because he didn't, because <laughs> he know? didn't leave. No, well, they, he did. Microsoft he? executives don't so much leave the company as they <laughs> they, start they get picked bad. off bit by bit like a scab. <laughs> oh, God, you know. I mean, eventually he'll be gone. So he's t he's like in the consumer division for a. a brief. I, you know what? I that's the story. It's so they can I, give I, him an office. I would think after this blog post that he wouldn't even be very welcome in that office. I, 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 I have, this is the, the blog equivalent of throwing a grenade in the room and closing the door. <laughs> See you know? ya. Bye, I bye. mean, what a, it's just bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, re, it's really, really interesting. So he's not. I, I think when you can get caught up in believing your own hype about your ability to that's what probably happens. See the future, or whatever yeah. it is. I, it reminds uh, me of Boston. Okay. That great, <laughs> that great rock and roll band that just really never was able to to create a, a second album of, of of the same quality. You know what I'm saying? I I do. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's what's amazing yes. about you, Paul. We're on the same wavelength. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Sophomore jinx. It is exactly like that, Leo. <laughs> Let's move on to Windows Phone 7. Anything more to report lately? All right, so this isn't going to mean a heck of a lot to some people, but for the people who are waiting on this information, this is the biggest deal in the world. And that is that one of the weird things that came out around the time of the Windows Phone launch was that contrary to previous uh, information from Microsoft, that Windows Phone would in fact support expandable storage via micro SD, oh, right? But we knew Not that, right? Not removable storage, right. but expandable storage. Right. Now, the question that everyone... So, first of all, only some phones have this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not removable in the sense that... You okay. can't pop these things out like little chiclets and put them in your PC. You can remove it, it, but it won't be but if you do usable. it won't work. Got it. Yeah. It has to stay in there. So, once, so, but you can add more memory. You just can't take it out. Sort of. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is the problem. So... When, when people hear about this, the first thing they want to know is, okay, which phones have this? And in, in the United States, only one of them has it. It's the Samsung Focus. And sure enough, you know, you can pry off the, the back of it and look, and there's a little SD card slot in there. Okay, neat. So um, are there any requirements, you know, for the card? Can I just buy any card? I mean, it becomes part of shared memory. So obviously, it, it must have to meet some performance, I.O. requirement, whatever it is. There are different classes of 
micro SD cards? Um, is there a requirement of some kind? Microsoft has been very obtuse in their uh, communications about this feature. And uh, to the point where I've gone back and forth, it, it's, it's gotten uh, kind of ugly in a way in my email exchanges with PR about this because they just don't answer the question, you know. And I've got a lot of people on my Windows Phone Secrets blog who are just itching to know, you know, they're, they're ready to buy, they want to pull the trigger right now and but buy But don't you something. have a focus? I mean, can't you try this? Yeah, I can, but I too have been waiting on the word from Microsoft because uh, I, I sort of <laughs> explained this very poorly, but one of the things that I'm going through is I'm, I'm switching my Windows Live ID that is behind the Xbox Live and Zoom account that I use for my, you know, my primary Live ID. And it, you may recall, and if you don't, it's okay. I, I, I do, I no, I recall, I recall. We talked about this last week. Yeah, I only got about 50% of the way done. So I figured... And I have to wait, remember, I had to wait 30 days before I could do the second half of it. So I figured sometime in November, on the same day, I would, I would wipe the phone out, right? Mm. I would switch my Windows Live ID over to the, the one I want it to be. I'll pop the memory in there, whatever it is, because by then I'll know. I'll reset the phone, and it will come back with all the RAM, and then I'll have the right account on there, and everything will be beautiful. So I've been waiting to hear from Microsoft. So I have not, I have not tried this. So... I had some meetings today, and one of the guys I met with was Charlie Kendall, who a lot of people probably know, um, a guy from Microsoft who works on the Windows Phone team, the developer uh, part of that. And even though this isn't really his um, area of expertise, I mean, I, I think they're all very well <laughs> informed on what's going on there because it's been a very hot button issue. And I, you know, I asked him, I said, please, you got to tell me the definitive answer to this question. I mean, I can't, it's like pulling teeth over at the PR department. And unfortunately, there is no good answer to this question. Um, Microsoft designed this feature at the request of uh, phone makers who wanted a way to increase the amount of RAM in the system. The problem is that the micro SD card uh, format doesn't have the right kind of quality control to be able to say this is the exact kind of thing you need to have. Because in Microsoft's experience testing these, whether it's a high-end card or a low-end card, the results are all over the map. And if you buy the wrong card, and it could literally be the same exact kind of card from the same manufacturer, one works great and the other one doesn't, everything will be fine. But if you, if you buy the wrong card, the thing can freeze, the performance is horrible, you'll have hangs, you'll have to unplug it and take oh. the battery out and reboot it. Right. And there's see, no way to know. I see the problem know. here. You can't tell ahead of time. Right. There's no way to know. And they literally cannot recommend any kind of card. There's no way. There's, they just can't do it. Uh, they only did it at the request of um, certain device makers. So... Um, for this to work, the carrier has to support it, and that means that they've actually tested individual cards to make sure that that thing works. They install it at the time of uh, the device is you know, boxed up, and it's sold like that as a, as a unit. You know, it's not something you add. Even the uh, even the carriers aren't going to add these things. I mean, it's not after the fact. I mean, in other words, you can't buy one and go back later and say, yeah, I'd like to increase the RAM. Will they, they sell them it. with them? Yeah. So you can buy it with them when you... Optionally. Right now, well, oh, I think, tellingly, right now, none of them are doing it. Oh. But the option is there. So as of right now, although... What maybe, is the deal? Why is... I don't... Huh? It's just a very sketchy thing. So Isn't I said, this known how to do this? I, I apparently know. <laughs> you know, it's so weird. They, yeah. So he said that, you know, the issue is that, you know, when you look at the performance of these cards in devices in which they're typically used... Uh, a camera or something. Right. You know, performance is not a huge issue because they have an onboard processor that can tell you when things are wrong with certain blocks of memory and all that, but those things don't always work very well. And when you look at the way they're used in other phones, you put it on the user to understand where stuff is stored and that if he blows away the file system, he might have lost files or applications or whatever. And they don't want with Windows Phone for the user to become manual hmm. file managers. You know, they don't right. want two separate file systems. They they want this thing to so, be very seamless. So this might be why Apple doesn't do this. They never sell SD cards yep. or, or even offer a slot. Well, Microsoft didn't want to do it either. And by the way, I had asked them about this several times over the summer. And I was told in no uncertain terms that this would not be expandable. So, But Android really itself, set the stage because every Android phone does. Yeah. Right. But, the, but Android, and by the nature of Android, requires you as the user to do all the heavy lifting. You know, you have to, when you download an application, you choose where to store it. Yeah. When you install an application, you choose where it's going to go. Well, it's like a computer. I mean, there's defaults, so there's a default yeah. for everything. So you don't have well, to know about it or pay attention to it. 
for this particular thing, I think Microsoft bent to the will of certain device makers, but they still want it to be as seamless as, say, the iPhone experience. They don't want users to have to think about this. Now, obviously, there are certain people who are just itching to go buy a card and, and make sure they have a 40 gig of storage kind of, you know, system. And some of them are going to have bad experiences if they do it. So now I'm not sure what I'm going to do. You know, I don't know. I guess when AT, I, I'm, I'm going to get the contact information from, uh, for a person from AT&T and I will, um, I'll ask them as well. And, you know, we'll see. But so from most, Microsoft's perspective, most of these phones come with 16 gigs. Some come with eight. Some come with eight. Yeah. The, I the think 16 would be okay. 16 is you know? fine. Does the Focus come with 16? Uh, no, the one I have oh. comes with 8. Oh. Yeah, and it's it's the one little weak link in the whole thing. I mean, uh, most, of the, most of the situation with the Focus is very positive. But, yeah, you know, even if you look at the iPhone, for example, it's kind of interesting to me. They still don't offer a 64 gigabyte version no, of the iPhone, they right? They do not. They, it only goes up to 32, and I always kind of wondered why that was. And I don't know that this is related per se, but it's interesting to me hmm. on Windows Phone. You're pretty much, I'd say 16 gig is the mainstream it looks like on these phones, but we'll see. You know, AT&T, maybe they'll surprise us and day one they'll offer that, you know, where they've expanded the memory. I don't know. How much RAM does that, is that, it, hmm? how much RAM is in these things? So that uh, varies, uh, you know, from machine to machine, but it's 256 is the minimum. Okay. And then they could just go from and there. And some have 512. Yeah. 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 What we're seeing in the phones that are shipping now is 256 or 512. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so I was hoping to have a definitive answer to this <laughs> little question, but uh, it looks like it's still not, not quite. All right. Hmm. So that's a weird, that's kind of a weird thing. It's, the, it's very strange. But I think all along, you know, they never intended to do this, and clearly, there was some they got, thought they of the part of the after. At the last I think device minute. makers were thinking, you know, a year from now, we might want to say, still use the same hardware platform, but RAM is going to be the issue. You know, we we want more RAM, and it would be nice if there was a way to touch machines that were already built and just put them up to spec. I'm, I, I, this is the guess, but it's, it must be something like I that. I think it's also that people are. It's a it's a feature war. People are going to come into the store and they're going to say, well, how much can I add to the Android phone? Yep. All right, you can add 32 gigs. Oh, how much to the Windows phone? Oh, well, you can't add any. Sure. How much does it come with? Eight. I'm yeah, going to buy the, the Android yeah, phone. May not be a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure I it don't, comes you know, I, I, my, I had this iPhone for such a short period of time because it was the one that got stolen. But, you know, when I finally, when I finally went up to the 3GS um, as my contract came up, I specifically got the 32 gig version because I wanted to be able to get all my media on there, not just just have to not think about it. You know, one of the problems when you have a smaller amount of storage is you have to really micromanage what you put on the phone. You know, you have to really think about it. You have to create playlists or yeah, something. Yeah. And I just, it, I, I, I don't, find, I don't put a lot of tough stuff on my phone. I and mean, if you have a Zoom Pass, I don't think it's going to be the issue that it yeah. that it is. Well, um, but in Zoom Pass, you could still sync downloaded songs to the phone. I mean, well, yeah, but I'm saying, you know, okay, so you only have eight gigs. Well, just every day, every time you connect the phone, have it do a refresh, and so you got another set of stuff. Yeah, no, I, sure. Yeah, everyone has different. You know, some people like to really be specific though about what they have. You know, some people have spent yeah, but, a lot of time reading and creating sure, playlists. But and, nobody needs more than eight gigs of music on a phone. Well, it's well, a lot it, of music. Except, well, unless that was their their only thing, you know. In yeah, other words, I guess, right. what if I, I just want to bring the phone on a trip and I can have I can have a couple of movies on there. Yeah, I can have some you're right. shows, podcasts. You know, yeah. it's all kinds of content. I mean, it'd be nice. You know, you, there's a, a, a device overload that occurs. You know, and I tried to travel light on this trip, but I I have two Zoom HDs and my phone, the laptop. You know, and, and uh, these aren't things that weigh a lot, but I mean, it's expensive for one thing. It'd be nice just to have. You know, one device that did it all. You know, we'll get there. We shall. I mean, this is a first iteration from uh, Microsoft of something that um, all these other manufacturers are on version 3, 4, 5 already of. Uh, I appreciate you giving them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> you know, it's not like they were, it was designed in a block, you know, in, a, in isolation. I mean, they... Yeah, uh, they're, it's 1.0, well, they, sure. They had but. some advantage. They did They did know what were, and I think you're seeing that, that they did know what people liked and didn't like. So it is, in that sense, a, a second generation or later phone. 
But they also had to solve problems, and you know, and that, and I think they've never had to solve them before. Yep. And they had to make some decisions. Uh, let's talk about the Slate PC. Is this <laughs> is this? Uh, Microsoft promised that we would have several slates on Windows Seven by the end of the year, and yes, we do. It's like promising someone a curse. You know? <laughs> I, I promise you will feel ill. Yeah, this is going to make you sick. Please eat it. Before the end uh, of the year, you will sicken and die. Yeah, for people who forget the history of this, uh, well, actually, we should go back to first to 2002 when, when HP came out with their Slate computer. The, in fact, there's one, I, it's not in this room, which is too bad because I could show it to you, but the, uh, my friend here, I'm at my friend Joe's house, he has one of those original co HP Compaq Slate PCs that literally came out eight and a half years ago. Um, you mean like these, the ones that no, uh, no, were the convertibles? That doesn't have, no, no, not a convertible, but an this, actual this slate. This one, you know, rotates and you can, it yep. turns into no, a no, slate. No, no, that's a convertible laptop. I'm talking yeah. about an actual slate, no keyboard, no, no keyboard. Mouse. Yeah. And who wanted that? Uh, nobody. That's, oh, see, yeah, that's what, right. What we learned over eight years was nobody <laughs> bought these things. <laughs> nobody wanted it. A few. So, it was a vertical he, market and, and warehouses and doctors wanted them, but that's it. Okay, so those six people bought them and then never bought another one, so I... I, I get a lot of email from people saying, you don't understand the, the, you know, the, the market for this stuff. Yeah, actually, I do, because I was really excited about this eight years ago, and I was apparently the only one. Um, over the intervening years, I mean, of the tablet PCs that did sell, they were the, like the one you just showed. They were convertible laptops, yeah. because at least in that case, for the 99% of the time... You have a notebook. You, yeah, use it like a notebook. And if you want a tablet, you got a tablet. Yeah, so... Last, excuse me, last year, it was a year and a half ago or so, you know, rumors of what became the iPad started circulating. Apple was working on a tablet. Everybody kind of knew it. So when CES came around, Microsoft, I think, preemptively tried to say, hey, we're in the tablet business too. And they were sh trying to show off new tablets that were coming down the pike from various partners. And the big one, for better or worse, was this HP Slate, which looks suspiciously like the Slate they came up with eight years ago. Oh, boy. Now, Obviously, the chipsets have gotten better. The uh, CPU and the integrated graphics chipsets are a million times better. Um, we have more RAM. You know, the operating system is more powerful and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, the basic form factor has not changed at all. And, of course, HP also, in the interim, purchased Palm and announced their intentions to come out with a WebOS-based version of a, uh, of a Slate-type PC. Maybe not the exact same hardware, but a, something that, very similar. So... This thing is is kind of a, if not a red herring, a, a, a sort of a, it's almost like we felt obligated to put it out because we told Microsoft we would and we are very big partners of Microsoft's and we have a long history together and we didn't want to disappoint anybody. But man, they didn't, you know, this, this thing kind of creeped out the back door and without any announcement whatsoever, um, you couldn't find it by searching for it for a while on the HP website. And apparently it's out there and you can buy one if you want for $800, but... As I've said so many times in the past, I would just warn people again, if for some reason, <laughs> and I, I, I can't even imagine if why. If you have no memory, you've arrived from the planet Zontar. Yeah. Um, right. If you have that problem that the guy from Memento has, allow me to remind you that <laughs> you don't want this computer. You've tried and this that before. What you're, and not just because they failed in the past, but because there is isn't. we are on the cusp of a new Intel chipset generation that's coming out in the spring that is going to make these things a million, not a million times, but dramatically better oh, than the version. Tell me about that. What's that? Chip. It's just a new Intel chipset. It includes a CPU and, and all these supporting chipsets and all that. That's going to literally make this kind of form factor and netbook class computers, but not Atom, but you know, real uh, Intel CPU uh, type systems just run more efficiently with much better battery life. Mm. You know, One of the things that sort of killed the original tablet PCs was the fact that we were still in the Pentium M days. You know, right. it was a it wasn't a mobile chip. It was a desktop chip that was kind of chipped away at to become sort of a mobile chip. And they didn't get good battery life. They had horrible performance. Um, it was just a, you know, the kind of a matter of timing. But that's really kind of where we are now with these Slate PCs. So I, apparently there are people who are literally itching for a Windows 7-based Slate PC. I don't know why. But if you are one of those people, I would just say to you, wait. Um, see what Microsoft announces at CES in January. And see what happens with the market. You know, uh, we're going to see better Slate computers next year. I, I, and by the way, even then, I don't think these computers make any sense. But if you have to have one, uh, please, you're not going to be happy with this. 
And, you know, people write me, are you going to review this thing? No, I'm going to ignore this thing. In fact, this is the last <laughs> time I'm ever going to talk about it. This is the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Nobody needs this. And uh, I, I know now, people are going to email me because I just said that, and I don't want to hear from you. You, you, accept I, the value <laughs> of an, you accept the value of an iPad. Yes. yes. So it's not that you're against ta tablet computing. No, so I, what I, makes it, what is the difference? Right. It's the, it's the operating system, right? It's a touch-based it, operating remember, system. Yeah, in fact, we can draw a parallel to what I just said about the Pen AMM chip, where we, we essentially had a, a desktop chip that was whittled down to be a little bit better for mobile computers. That's what, doing, that's what putting Windows on this slate thing is. You, know? you have a system that is designed for the biggest honking PCs on Earth. It just doesn't really work well in these little things. You know, it's, not, it's not optimized for that. Right. Um, iOS, for better or worse, um, is a mobile operating system. It's yes, it's based on Mac OS X, you know, whatever. But it's it was designed specifically for these highly mobile systems. It has instant on capabilities. Um, it runs fantastically well on that processor that Apple has, and uh, you know, it's 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 limited by design, but it's also designed for the limits of the of the hardware. It's they they match, you know. Uh, Microsoft has a system, I think, in Windows Phone OS, uh, but if not, they also have the you know the embedded version of Windows Seven and so forth that I think would be a better fit for a tablet type device. Um, and I, I think of these things as a device, not as a PC, because really, you can't take away a keyboard and a mouse from a PC and call it a PC. You, you, I think those things are still necessary. So anyone who buys a Slate PC is going to attach a keyboard to it a lot of the time and a mouse. And yeah, I don't know. I, I just it just it doesn't make sense to me. Hmm. Yeah, I've wondered I, myself. It's hard to tell what what is that secret sauce. But I think it is this something designed around touch. I have to say I, I've moved kind of moved from my iPad to my the, the new MacBook Air because I yeah. like the size, but I want a keyboard and I want a, a mouse. Yep. It depends on what you're doing with life. I mean, yeah, for it's some very people, specific. It's, yeah, if you're going to browse the web a lot and answer short emails, uh, that kind of thing, play little games. Um, read books, whatever. I mean, an iPad-type device makes a lot of sense. And by the way, that is a lot of people. That's fine. It's not anything to be embarrassed by. But if you have to, you know, I write. You know, I'm not Exactly. Gonna, I can't to, create content I, on this thing. Me? No, I, no, it's no. not. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, no, I need, a, I need a machine that is de designed for generating content. Um, you know, maybe I'm the minority, too, and that's fine. I mean, I understand that. But I think for a lot, you know, in, in workplace situations... Those people need to respond to emails, you know, and some of them can do it on a phone. You know, some of them can't. I guess, again, it, it just depends on your situation. But, um, you know, the PC has certain features and functionality and all that stuff. And I think when you take away the keyboard and the mouse, it becomes an episode in frustration, you know. Well, well, uh, is the WebOS from HP going to come out this year or is that next year? No, uh, next year. That I mean, might I'm be a sure contender, we'll, right? You know, we'll see. You know, obviously, we've got BlackBerry doing their thing. There, there are apparently about 1,100 companies doing Android-based tablets. <laughs> right. Um, you know, Apple's going to have some competition one way or the other, but I guess we'll see. I mean, I think the, uh, Apple has established a nice little um, kind of new product for themselves there, and it, it's complementary, I think, to their Mac and iPhone products, and good for them. You know, I don't, I don't think that. I don't. I just don't think a, a slate PC is an eight hundred dollars slate PC. I mean, it blows away all the advantages of the PC ecosystem when you sell right. something like that's right. crazy. Right. Looking for a service pack uh, for Windows Seven. Service Pack One is now in release candidate one. Yep. You may recall. I think I might have discussed this on the podcast before anywhere else, but um, we had expected. Service Pack 1 to ship by the end of this year. And then I discovered from some contacts at Microsoft, in fact, that it would be early next year. And with the release of the RC1 release, if you will, uh, they have acknowledged that publicly now. So they're saying the first quarter of 2011 for the final release. Although, you know, again, for Windows 7 users, it doesn't make a big difference. There are literally no major new features and no unique, you know, features that are unique to Windows 7 in the Service Pack. It's all really on the server side. Um, so, you could download the release candidate if you wanted, but if you do it right, what you'll notice when it's installed is nothing. So, <laughs> you know, there's not really much of a point. Okay. Yeah. It's just all the hot fixes. Yeah. It's pretty much a roll up. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, travel sites are opposing Google's purchase of ITA. Google bought this travel company, ITA, so that they could... Or just uh, trying to, yeah. Just trying to, so they could have uh, uh, updated fare information and so forth in their search results. That should say Unite, not Unit, <laughs> by the way, um, in my notes. but Travel sites Unite. Unite. They don't like the yeah. idea. Apparently, ITA is responsible for a huge portion of the underlying technology they used use by, yeah. Yeah, by most travel sites. And the fear is that if Google is able to buy this company, they will dominate travel searches and then screw a bunch of these companies out of the market, which I have to say is probably a legitimate concern, you know. Uh, Bing uh, uses it for its back-end travel searches, but uh -huh. actual travel sites like uh, Expedia, um, I think Travelocity might be one of them mm -hmm. as well. Um, I would be bringing up my webpage to find this out for sure, but I can't. I don't know why. Um, yeah, Hotwired, Kayak, um, Travelocity have all created this organization called Fair Search, and they're petitioning the U.S. Department of Justice to block the sale. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how serious they are. <laughs> I think these days Google could pretty much expect that everything it does, somebody's going to hate. I have to think the first thing they did was just go to the DOJ and say, here's the stuff you're going to be looking for. Yeah, get ready, because <laughs> yeah. we're going to piss you off again. Yeah, and they're like, what are you handing us? And then the, the announcement comes over the yeah. wire. You know. Oh, that. Uh, hey, let's take a little break. We've got lots more to talk about, including our Windows 7 feature of the week, our tip of the week, our software pick of the week. But before we do that, I do want to mention our Ford Fiesta of the week. You, were, you tried to get a Ford when you were up there, didn't you? They did. And they were all all booked up. See, people may forget this, but, you know, months and months before Ford was a sponsor, I rented a car. You like the sink. Right? I, 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 I do had remember Ford sink, And I, yeah. as I was driving in the middle of nowhere, it occurred to me, hey, I could, I can use this with my uh, Zoom device and my phone, my iPhone at the time. And, yeah. and I did. And it was awesome. And I, and I remember we talked about it on the podcast. And I was really blown away by it. But now the Windows phone is out. I wanted to see. I want you to, too. I'm sure it'll work yeah. fine because Ford Sync's based on Microsoft Car, so I would be shocked if it didn't work fine. But it'd be interesting to see, for instance, if it does. Know. Right. Yeah. Well, so you can do, there, there, there are different levels, right? You know, right. from doing the Ford Sync, you can do uh, just the line in audio playback. It's fine. Yeah, anything can do that, though. That's uh, USB based, which is actually kind of interesting. And I'm curious how Windows Phone works over USB like that. I know USB supports audio and video. Uh, playback that would be interesting, and then but there's also Bluetooth uh, support. Love you can do that. Bluetooth with the the contacts, obviously. And I call my wife from the car, which I love doing. When I, I, I just saw an ad for another car company, and they mentioned optional Bluetooth streaming. It's like, yeah, hey, I, I got that. That's in my Ford Sync. I love that. Yeah, because uh, I get right. in the car, I don't have to hook up anything. My phone's in my pocket, but if I'm listening to an audio book, yes. it picks it up from where yes. I left off. I mean, it's just. I will say, I'm not. I won't name the company, but the, the I, I'm renting a car from another company. I have to say there. Their Bluetooth stuff is not, it's not great. <laughs> you don't have, you know. Yeah, I know. It's I not know. Great. Look, you got to buy a Ford. Just that's, that's the way it is. And I was just driving uh, uh, today and I, uh, there was a little cute little Ford Fiesta going right by me and I, and I waved at them and they waved back. They were obviously happily driving their Fiesta. It is a great little car. Partly they're happy because they're saving so much money on gas. 40 miles per gallon on the highway, according to the EPA. 40 highway miles per gallon. No other compact car is more fuel efficient. Uh, and the, the uh, standard features include that special 1.6 liter engine, the Duratech TIVCT. That, that I-4 engine is nice. Peppy, but, but economical. The easy fuel capless fuel filter, which sounds like a little thing, but let me tell you, when you've got it, I have it on my uh, 2010 Mustang, it changes your life. <laughs> I actually drove Jammer V. Quasi. He says, where's the lever to open the... I want to put gas in. Where's the lever? I said, there's no lever. Just go over and push it, and it opens. Where's the Where's the cap? There's no cap. Did you leave the cap? No, there's no cap. You just stick the nozzle. Oh, but that was a little too easy. <laughs> uh, Four-inch multifunctional display with LCD screen on the, on the new Fiesta. Several optional features, including heated leather-trimmed seats. I would get that. I have that. And uh, this morning, well, this morning my son gets in the car. Says, I'm freezing. And, you know, it takes a little while for the car to heat up. So you turn on the heat uh, in the seat. And the mm -hmm. sea heat is instant, and you feel, oh, 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 it's not, yeah, out there in Dedham, you need that. Even here in California, I use it. The power shift, six-speed automatic transmission, also uh, 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 optional. And, of course, voice-activated sync, hands-free calling, so you never miss a call. You never take your eyes off the road or your hands off the wheel. 911 assist, which I, uh, you know, it's optional, but I always turn it on on every phone. 
We talked about the music, the podcast support. Uh, on Android, it reads your text messages a lot. I'd be very curious. I bet it does with Windows Phone 7. I'd love to see that. Mm. Yeah, no, mm. that's cool. So a message comes in. It goes, bloop. And then you say, okay, read it to me. And it reads you the message. And It's, it's a, like the Kindle voice or whatever. Yeah, it's a, it's a female voice. It's pretty. I mean, it's, the voice of this is very good nowadays. Yeah. And although it's a little funny, depending on the message. I have my... <laughs> right. My because colleagues, they can abbreviate. My colleagues figured out that I was doing this and they started making my... My car say, say things. <laughs> That's great. Have you seen the? There's a YouTube uh, Fiesta versus Lamborghini video. That's very funny on uh, nice on YouTube. <laughs> on YouTube, it's a viral video. Take a look at the Fiesta. Drive one this week at a Ford dealer near you. While you're there, say I want to look at the sink too because it's it's, it's a must have. Drive one this week. The Ford Fiesta. It's a beaut. She's a beauty. You're gonna love her. Our Windows Seven. Windows Phone 7 feature of the week, Paul. Yeah, last week, you remember we talked about hubs, and I did a, I did a write-up about this. Right. This week is actually just about uh, hardware features that are common or optional on the phone, because I think there's some misconceptions out there about what is on all phones. You know, when you get a Windows Phone, one of the, you know, the deal for Microsoft was you should be able to um, understand that there's a... You know, it's a reference platform. They have to meet certain requirements, uh, and it creates a more unified experience. So that you, you know, when you buy any Windows phone, it's a Windows phone. You know, it's not a an HTC whatever. You're buying a Windows phone. So, um, you know, so it's funny because you can see these in advertisements already. People or uh, companies rather are advertising certain features as if they're unique to their phone, when in fact these things are just common to every single Windows phone. You know, so every single Windows phone will have one gigahertz or faster ARM uh, processor, right? Um, a, a DirectX 9 capable graphics processing unit, at least 256 megabytes of RAM, like we talked about earlier, and 8 gigs of storage or more. Um, and there are also, uh, one thing that is not very commonly understood right now is that there are actually two, what they call chassis specs. And the machines that we're seeing right now are all these uh, chassis one machines, right? And these are the the big touchscreen type devices that, you know, it's common to all of the devices we see right now. But there's a chassis two spec as well. And in the spring, we're going to start seeing machines based on this chassis two design. And this is a, a design with a smaller screen and it will be uh, more of a BlackBerry type device with a, you know, the not a slide out keyboard, but a full on keyboard that's always there, like a thumb keyboard that's built into the machine, you know, like a uh, like a standard BlackBerry has. But for the chassis one hardware, um, the resolution is always going to be 800 by 480, and that's big enough to allow up to eight of those live tiles on the uh, on the front page, you know, on the front on the start screen, which is what they're looking for. They all have accelerometers, uh, assisted GPS, compass, light sensor, proximity sensor an FM radio tuner, uh, micro USB, right, for connectivity and for charging and also for eventually, although it's not available right now, but also for audio video transfer. I think eventually we're going to have software built into the phone that will allow us to uh, broadcast even the UI out to a, uh, to a separate place, which oh, would be that's nice. Yes, that's one limitation of the iPhone you or the iPad. You only get certain things. You can't see the UI. Yeah, I've, I always found that to be really odd, even back in the iPod days. You know, why not just put the yeah. eye, you know, especially when it was a non-touch UI. Um, just yeah. put the UI on the screen. It would make it easy to navigate from the screen. Yeah, but that's look not down the and up yeah. and down and all of that, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why they do things like that, but uh, yeah. Now, there is actually optional hardware features. And what's interesting is that a lot of the optional features are features that I think most people would assume would be on all of them. And sure enough, some of these are on all of them. Like, for example, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are actually optional. That's probably but, international markets where those might yeah, be. Yeah, they could be, too. yeah. They are, in fact, those features are, in fact, on all the phones that are shipping right now. I think China, um, Wi-Fi is controversial in China, for instance. So you, okay. you make that optional so that a Chinese company can pick it up. Right. Um, the, uh, the expandable but not removable storage is obviously an optional yeah. feature. Yeah. And uh, in the U.S. right now, uh, only on the Samsung Focus. Um, all of uh, the Windows phones have to have a camera capable of five megapixel photos or higher and some form of video recording. But one of the optional features is obviously HD quality uh, video um, and yeah, geotagging capabilities on the GPS, you know, a, a headphone jack, a microphone and external speakers um, are oddly <laughs> actually um, uh, optional. <laughs> features, which is kind of interesting. Um, let me see what else we have. Let me see if there's anything in the list that's important here. 
Uh, yeah, and then actually, you know, and I, I did a little write-up of this, uh, it, both in the book and in my review, where, you know, there are some features that just aren't available. So, for example, people have asked me about front-facing cameras. It is possible that phone some, makers... Somebody has that, that, right? Yeah, so if if, if a phone maker implements that, they, what they have to do is also support the software end of it. So it's the type of thing where maybe uh, they add a front-facing camera, and then they write a software application that can take advantage of it. But the problem is none of the other applications will ever be able to take advantage of it. So if Microsoft comes out with Windows Live Messenger and you want to do video chat, it's not going to work because it just doesn't have any understanding of that feature. Right. It's just not a low-level system feature. Um, one of the things I wish that Microsoft had done for Windows Phone, and I, I really don't understand why they didn't, is they could have added a Zune-style connector, and it would have it would have made a, the standardization of add-ons oh, possible, yeah. right? For docking, right. for car systems, uh, for all kinds of reasons. And I, I think that was a, uh, that, uh, is a missed opportunity of sorts. But they've gone with micro USB, which, is, by the way, is common to all of the devices. And I think part of it is that European standard that right. uh, companies have all agreed to uh, implement. So, you know, that's kind of where we're at. It's not possible to buy a Windows Phone device that has a higher resolution screen. Or, for that matter, a lower resolution screen. There's no, um, you know, gyroscope or you know, other features like that. So, um, anyway, I, as far as differentiators go, you know, the things to look. I think the big thing in the real world here in the United States, at least, is going to be the stuff we talked about earlier. It's going to be storage, for the most part. Uh, the screen type. You know, uh, they don't specify what kind of screen you have to use, right? So, you have this Super AMOLED type screen on the Focus, which is just superior. Um, but then some of the devices can have bigger screens, you know, the, uh, the HD. But the same resolution, set. right? So but the screen the size, resolution. so that's yeah. kind of interesting. But it creates a standardization right. effect. One of the right. things they specify is the arrangement of tiles and which tiles have to be where. You know, in, in OEMs, meaning uh, the hardware makers and also the wireless carriers have some ability to put things in certain places, but not in others. So, you know, the first four tiles have to be what Microsoft specifies. So the top of the screen is always going to be the same. Now, can the user customize that? Yeah, you can blow all that stuff away. So that's away. just how it comes, but you can, yeah. you can kill it. Okay, good. What's interesting about the software removable cap or removal capabilities is that the user can uninstall, not just hide, but actually uninstall anything that the wireless carrier puts on the phone. But they can't remove anything that Microsoft puts on the phone. Oh. So... For, uh, if you I actually to. like that because yeah. on Android, it's the care, it's the carrier crap you want to get rid of. Right, right. And I, I, it's been interesting to me, you know, on the Focus, for example, there are several AT and T utilities. Now, to be honest, some of them are actually really useful, but there's some it's things on the Focus that quite understand. Yeah, but you can actually get rid of all of them. You don't That's have nice. to have them on there. I like that. Yeah, you cannot do that on Android. Really? No, so, no, you're stuck. The carrier, oh, interesting. Carrier customizations live forever. <laughs> oh, well, that's too bad. <laughs> yes, I agree. Although, look, you don't have to see them. You don't have to put them on the screen. So they're, you know, just, they're just lurking the times, in the background. The time I spend with Windows 7, I have to say, Windows Phone 7, looking at the, the, at the smartphone market, I think iPhone is pretty secure in, in the sense that they have a, a great platform, a, a beautiful uh, design element, um, a mature ecosystem and all that stuff. And Windows Phone, I think, is the up and comer, and I, you know they're they're rough in some spots, but I think they're they're going after all the right design cues and all that stuff, and they have the right amount of control over the platform. And then the Android thing is like this: it's anarchy. Yeah, you know, it, it is. I'm actually. Well, it's open, and that's the problem. Is that because it's an open source program? Yeah, you, I'm, anybody I'm can surprised. install it anywhere for free. I'm surprised it's as popular as it is. Now, you know, the more the time goes by, when I first, you know, encountered my own Android phone and, had, you know, could spend significant time with it, my original reaction was like, okay, okay I get it. I, I get why this thing is popular. But, you know, the funny thing is, as the months have gone on, I, I don't know that I get it anymore. <laughs> you know, I, I'm surprised, you know, there, for example, people will uh, criticize Windows Phone incessantly because it doesn't have copy and paste, you know. This is like the, the cheapest, easiest complaint in the world. But where are the complaints about how Android doesn't have a cohesive media strategy of any kind? You know, that, uh, you know, there is not, nothing like iTunes. There is nothing like iPod software. You know, how I mean, you, you mean a desktop app? 
No, I mean on the on the phone and and to get well, there's a player there's a no, I, I, there's a Google I know player. It's a player but I mean in other words to get stuff back and forth right to oh, get there's it on, no obvious way to do that yeah 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 it's a lot of figuring out to be yeah, done now for yeah. people like you and and in I lot just of mount the drive and copy it over okay <laughs> now but to say that's my wife and she's looking <laughs> no at I know in fact uniform. somebody in the chat room said oh oh I beg to differ you can remove. You carry your customizations. You ne merely have to root and install a custom ROM. No, I, I listen. I was joking with people about this day at PDC. You know, you can't criticize Android. I I will get hundreds of emails for just saying what I just said because people will say, "Well, Mr. Thrott, obviously you never heard of the yada 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 yeah. utility that does exactly what you're asking well, for." Well, I don't understand what your problem is. But in its defense, it's kind of like the, it's kind of like a, a PC. You know, uh, you know, Windows uh, came for a long time without a DVD player. You had yeah. to download one. I mean, it's more like a PC than it is like a phone. Okay, now, except for one thing: when when you have to buy um, DVD player software, or if you you know in 1995 or whenever you're talking about, you would walk into a Best Buy, which is like this real big store. You know the the Android marketplace. I, said, I used this description with Ed Bot today. I said, you know, the Android marketplace is like a flea market next to a Best Buy was hit by a hurricane and the remains of the two stores were all thrown together into a huge pile and now you have to go find the good stuff that's buried under the crap you know and it, it, it really puts the onus on the user uh, to find the stuff because it's just not obvious right. and, and some uh, of us like that but not everybody does and most people you're right your wife doesn't probably a lot most people want this kind of listen, unified thing but I have to tell you to the iPhone because of this that's because right. on the iPhone this stuff is not just great it's obvious and it's yeah. nice looking, and, and, and those people choose an iPhone, and that's why it's a little tough, I think, for Microsoft to come in here and find a new, find a niche. Well, as we talked about, um, you know, Microsoft is splitting the difference. You know, right. they they're trying to offer the elegance of the Apple stuff with the choice. Right. Of I'm the seeing Android. those ads. Boy, they ran them all over the place on the World Series and the playoffs. Yeah. And uh, I'll be very curious to see what people's reactions are. Uh, my wife loved. I like it. the I like the really ad. You know, where the guy drops the phone in the toilet. Or really. Really? The guy looks yeah. like, really? Yeah. My <laughs> wife left, loved the the season of The Witch one where, uh, you know, it, it, she loved it. So yeah, I was good. watching because, you know, I didn't want to poison her. And yep. I, I was just See curious, what, what did yeah. you think of that? I almost wanted to say, and what was that at like 10 seconds later? Mm -hmm. What was that an ad for? Do you remember? Sure. I don't know. I have to ask her. I, I You know, people don't like this ad, or these ads for some reason, but Microsoft has those Bing ads where it's a bunch of people those. just saying stuff. I, don't I actually people hate, hate those. It's weird how it has that reaction, but... Yeah. But at least you have a you have a very strong reaction, and you have oh, to admit true. that is what the search engine is like, isn't it? Yeah. It is. It's just look. I typed in. You know, it's like Apple being the obvious example. You go to the Google.com and you search for Apple. You know, I get I get Google uh, search. Uh, I'm sorry, Google uh, news alerts via email. Uh, Microsoft, Intel, Mozilla, Apple. You know, whatever it is. The Apple ones, ninety percent of them are about Apple, the the computer company. But the other 10% are about apple pickers in northern, uh, <laughs> you know, New York State. Or uh, I mean, it's, it's, that's because that's, you know, that's the state of search. That's a computer. They're not humans. But you and I are used to that. I, uh, yeah. That's a, you know. I, I, it, look, it's a very exciting time. And, uh, and it's, it, it's a, really is a transition from desktop computing to mobile computing. Yep. And it's a very exciting, I think, a fascinating time. And I think, you know, we, we can argue on and on about the merits and, you know, negatives of various platforms. But the fact remains, uh, we're seeing innovation, a lot of innovation that we haven't seen in a while. And I'm, I'm thrilled. I, for one, am very happy about us all. Yeah. yeah. And I'm very happy about Windows Phone 7. I can't wait to get my hands on one. And it's just a couple of weeks now. Yep. Uh, let's see. Our tip of the week for those of you using Windows Live Photo Gallery. Yeah, you know, Brian, uh, someone emailed me about this, Brian Scott. He said, you know, I just didn't even know this stuff was in there. <laughs> you know, I mean, um, Windows Live Photo Gallery is the free photo editor and photo management software that comes with Windows Live Essentials. It was recently updated to the uh, 2011 version. And it, it's always had sort of basic editing features. Um, but th in this version, they've really gone after the Photoshop elements um, feature set it seems like you know they have a feature called photo fuse which they actually have a nice tv ad for by the way where you have you know multiple pictures of a group is the kind of the uh, the canonical example where 
in one picture, Bobby is blinking, and in this picture, yeah, Susie that's the, is they were running that ad a lot too. Yeah, yeah. It's and a then good she ad says a weird thing, and I don't understand it. And her, <laughs> let's yeah. go to the cloud. And then all of a sudden, her desk flips over, <laughs> and it's still a Windows computer. It's just a it's different Windows, Windows yep. computer. Yep. It's huh? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, know. I I don't understand that one at all. But okay. I think they're trying to tie Windows Live to the cloud. But yeah, it's just an end user application. It does <laughs> share. It's a, a variety of uh, photo and video. Let's so go to about. the cloud. Anyway, My wife, by the way, did then. not like that ad. Okay. And she didn't like it because <laughs> at the end, the woman is saying nasty things about her family. Well, see, to me, the woman has dressed her family all in the same shirt. Yeah, she's the problem. So I think, I think it's clear. Her, she says with a grain of sand. Yeah, that, you know, no, that so. woman is, is a pro with her rotating desk and her weird cloud yeah. is, is clearly the yeah, issue. I think we understand she's like Kathy Bates from Misery, yeah. so... Yeah, yeah, I felt for the for the husband and kids. I really felt sorry for him. <laughs> exactly. To be honest, no wonder they were like they were. No wonder they weren't looking at the camera. They yeah. were like eyeing exits. You know, <laughs> they were trying to get out of there. Mom just cut my head out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to the cloud. Let's go to anyway, the cloud. so this feature is part of uh, the the new is yeah, it the essentials. new life thing? It's, okay. it's the photo editing application. It's surprisingly excellent. And Does it work well? I, Does it work like in the uh, commercial? I had. Been, I had been paying for Photoshop Elements every year, and I stopped a couple of years ago, and largely because a lot of the reason I would use it is for this photo editing stuff. And I, I find the Windows Live stuff to work great. And I'm going to try it. There's no great. real reason to pay for it. I think between that and Picasa, if, especially if you're a Google person, uh, there's almost no reason to buy anything anymore, to you the, know, for photo editing. To the cloud. Off to the cloud. It's like to the Batcave. To the cloud, Robin. Actually, you know, as long as we're talking about the cloud, the place to put your... Backups is in the cloud, come to think of it. Nice. Carbonite could do an ad like that. Where's my data? It's in the cloud. If you're backing up locally, as many of you are, to a local hard drive or a USB key or a DVD or something, you know, there's one problem. And it's fine, and I, and I encourage you to keep doing that because you want to have as many backups as you can. But there's a problem because if there's a fire or a flood or somebody steals all your stuff, they take the backups along with the originals. And where's your backup now, my friend? Where is your backup now? What will you do? To quote Carl Malden. If you had been backing up with Carbonite, you wouldn't worry because you just log on with any computer, even a free iPhone app or BlackBerry app, and there's your stuff on your Carbonite account. Secure, safe, and ready to download and use again. It is a great solution for anybody with a laptop, students, uh, any you know, anytime you're near, near the Internet, even an open access point, your stuff is backed up. And let, let me remind you, it uses SSL, so it's absolutely secure. Nobody's seeing your stuff. You can even add additional encryption with Triple Desk or Blowfish, and you're, you're, you're safe. I want you to try it free for two weeks. It, it works so well. Just to go to Carbonite.com, use the uh, offer. Well, Carbonite.com slash Windows Weekly. You can try it free for two weeks. You don't even, you don't even need a credit card. Just set it up and, and go. If you decide to buy, do use Windows Weekly as the offer code because that'll save you. You'll get two free months. So it's a pretty good savings. It's only $55 a year anyway for all the data on your internal drive, all your personal stuff. Carbonite, it's automatic, back up to the cloud, encrypted. This is what you want. Back it up. You got to back it up to get it back. If you're going to do it right, you'll use Carbonite. I do. All right, Paul, uh, moving on yes, here, your software pick of the week. Yeah, this is kind of a surprising one in some ways because I've trashed this software a lot. But uh, oh. Microsoft has a little-known version of Xbox Live for Windows called Games for Windows Live. And they don't have as many games as, obviously, the Xbox has. And by, by games, I mean games that fully support the whole Xbox Live ecosystem. You know, they have leaderboards and achievements and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, they've been... They've been quietly updating it over the years, and they've added such things as a marketplace uh, through the client where you can actually download games, you know, full games, rather than buy the retail box and you'll come home with a, C a DVD or whatever. Um, but what's happening over the next month is they're actually going to introduce a new uh, marketplace on the web for these games for Windows Live. So in addition to the, the client software, which gives you much of the functionality of Xbox Live, but on Windows, they're actually going to have a, a marketplace you can access very simply outside of the client and um, download things on the web. Because we all know marketplaces are the biggest thing in the world right now. And uh, one thing I noticed was that uh, there's a classic shooter uh, called Fear, which you haven't played. Do you go pew, 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 pew? <laughs> it's pew. not that classic. Oh. But it's, uh, <laughs> it's a couple of years old. And, <laughs> It's actually, it's a paranormal kind of scary oh. uh, game. And it's actually, I have to say, 
Uh, I played Fear through completely and as well as a sequel. Um, and now that I'm thinking about it in an add-on pack on the Xbox 360, you know, a few years back. And Fear actually had some legitimately scary scenes uh, in it. And I paid 60 bucks for that game a few years ago. It's, you can get it for $5 right oh, now. Oh, I'm going to get it. That's great. On uh, Games for Windows Live. Yeah, so uh, check it out because I, I think that this sudden push now to multi-platform gaming between the Xbox 360, Windows, and Windows Phone is causing Microsoft to, you know, finally get moving a little bit on the Windows side. So I think we're going to see some interesting developments there. And if you're an achievement point whore like I am, uh, the possibility of playing the same exact game between the console and Windows and getting double the achievements is hard, hard to resist. <laughs> so, something, something to think about. Does it say that on your business card, Paul Thorat, achievement, achievement point horror. Actually, it doesn't, but maybe it will. Maybe it will. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to throw in a bonus uh, phone app for you here. Yeah, um, this one's awesome. This is the Harvest, and uh, if you think back to the very original. Windows Phone introduction in February at the uh, Mobile World Congress. This, this yeah. was the game that they showed yeah. off. And I have to say, when they showed this game off, I thought, this is a technology demo. Right. This they isn't a real game. This. Yeah. this is never coming out. Yeah. It looks great, but whatever. And it's on the phone now, and it's um, it's one of the really expensive games for Windows Phone. So I think it's six ninety nine. Oh wow! But it is How a, expensive. It is 3D hardware accelerated. It's awesome. It's a it's a really really good game. You're making and me it, want this damn phone. It has achievements too. <laughs> <laughs> pew, pew, pew. So, in the downtime between Call of Duty games, which is pretty much my life in a nutshell, uh, this is another way to get achievements. Can I pre-order it yet? My, uh, my Samsung Focus from at Oh, the Focus, yeah. Uh, no. I'm sorry. Gosh. I'm going to actually get in line, aren't I? November Maybe. 8th, i got to go to the store. I'm going to be talking to AT&T soon. I'll ask him about pre-orders. What I've heard is that they're not going to be doing pre-orders. Really? But. That's they don't expect pack, lines? I, I, this is kind of a third person kind of... Yeah. We'll see. We'll it's see. Not, I, don't, I don't want to present that as a fact, but you that's know, what I... This is why people listen to Windows Weekly religiously every week. For the third party hearsay stuff? No, because they'll... No, because when you find out, you will know. <laughs> You'll know definitively, probably yes. by next week. What's your Halloween costume this week, Paul? <laughs> oh, I don't have a Halloween costume. I'm not going to... Um, you know, I'm not going to be around for Halloween. I'm, I'm away... Oh. Uh, you know, uh, Friday actually is my birthday, by the way, and I'm away for my birthday. Happy and then birthday. Sunday is Halloween, and I'm away for that. Oh. And then I don't get home till next Wednesday. So, where's my Spock ears? I have a, <laughs> I have a nice wig. No, yeah. it's all right. It's all right, Mark. <laughs> Mark jumps my up. Son, my son came home with the the mask from the guy from uh, Saw. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's creepy. Or she could not, my son is afraid of. My son is afraid of everything. I don't well, even know if he, he ever won't see saw it. He's behind it. He would be so horrified by this, the, the, the movies, you know, like he, right. he could never, it's going to be years before he could handle a movie like this. I can't handle it. I started watching it and it was like yeah, they're, three, they're 30 awful. seconds in. I'm going, I don't know, that's it on this. Yeah. I can't believe, you know, I don't think he just doesn't understand it. You know, I, I said, what, what do you think that is? You know, he says, it's, isn't this a scary guy from a movie? No, but that's good. <laughs> he wants to be the scary guy, not the scared guy. Uh, my, my, <laughs> I was just telling a friend, you know, my son's new phrase is ninja. <laughs> He'll say something like, I was totally ninja. And I, I, I have to resist the urge to burst his bubble with something like, I heard you I've coming met a mind. ninja who's afraid of the dark. <laughs> yeah, <there's, laughs> you know? It's a special kind of ninja. Yeah. yeah. Paul, always a pleasure. Uh, enjoy the rest of your uh, week in uh, Redmond. Thank you, sir. The rest of PDC. We'll be back uh, at our regularly scheduled hour next week. We do the show normally 11 a.m., Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time on Thursdays at live.twit.tv. Yep. I'm actually going to be in Las Vegas next week before the show. I'll be back oh, for the show. Okay. I'll go to Vegas on Monday for a couple of days. Gosh, you are just a traveling man. Is that for a Penton Media event? Yeah, we're having our Windows connection show there. Oh, so it's great. I'll be clinging around. We'll enjoy. <laughs> have a great time. And uh, we'll see you next week on Windows Weekly. Thank you, sir.